Welcome to The Woman's Connection. I'm Barry Louise Switzen, your moderator. The Woman's Connection is a program about events shaping women's lives and helping one gain authentic power on a personal or professional level. So won't you stay tuned? Welcome. One of the things that I love to do is travel the world, and the world I have seen a quite a bit. And our guest today is a woman who's created a niche business within the travel industry, and I can't wait to hear more about it. So let us welcome Cassandra Santoro. San Cassandra, thank nice you for to having me. You. Thank you for having My me. My pleasure. First of all, let's start with what exactly do you do? Right, so I own a company called Travel Italian Style, and I do custom travel planning and uh, woman-focused tours um, in Italy, just Italy, and they're specific for authentic experiences, unique, a bit off the beaten path, and then for the women tours, a bit inspiring as well. Well, when you say for the women, it's a bit inspiring, what do you mean? I think that, um, especially nowadays, we want to travel, but we have a fear to travel on our own, um, or we make excuses that we're too busy or we're working too much to take time for ourselves. So the point of these trips is to bring women and just to have a great time in Italy and live the simple life like they do, um, and also just you know give them enough time to enjoy um, time for, for them, really. Well, all right, I've had some very interesting experiences traveling in Italy and traveling around the world, but how do you protect yourself as a single woman traveling? I say the same thing I say to friends here in New York. You know, be smart, um, shoulder bags or no bags, um, don't put money in your back pocket, simple things like that. But also, um, health-wise, you can check the CDC website before you go. You can register your trip um, to the consulate or the embassy. And, um, you know, there's, there's just ways to prepare before. And then when you get there, just to keep an eye open. And if you can join a, a tour, it does help to stay with a group. Um, if you are, if you have any fear at all. Mm -hmm. How do you stay healthy while you're traveling? Well, um, I do like to run. Um, I think that running is a great way to get to know a city. So it's kind of hits two points of traveling. You get to see off the beaten path. Um, and then you also get to stay in shape and eat lots of gelato after that, which makes me happy. Um, I also carry ginger pills with me everywhere. Um, it's a holistic way of, you know, just stay, you know, nausea, um, if you, or just, you know, to stay calm. Um, and then a, a different way, there's a, lots of blogs, and because I know nowadays with gluten-free um, or vegetarian or vegan, there's lots of blogs to prepare before. And um, I work with some of these people as well, so that when I go over there, basically I'm just ready to eat the local produce and not to be concerned, um, and I'm aware of what is on the menu. Now you say you take ginger pills. When do you take the ginger pills, before or after you eat the gelato? Um, depending on the day, <laughs> sometimes both, but I do like to take them before, um, if I know I'm gonna have a big eating day. Um, but basically, I, I try to save it to the end of the day, because in Italy, there's a lot of ways they actually eat fennel, um, kiwi, and they have digestivos, they're not, they're the liqueur, but they're not just to drink and get drunk, actually, although they are tasty, they're for digestion. That's why they eat it after a meal. So I try those methods first, and then I'll, I'll take a ginger pill. How have you seen the world of traveling for women change in the past few years? I know my father and I, when I started out traveling, we got into all kinds of arguments because I'd always have to borrow money because something came up. He said, well, if you saved your money instead of traveling, you'd have the money. And the saving grace was after a couple years, the Wall Street Journal came out with a huge article saying the best education is traveling. Absolutely. How do you see things evolving in your business? I think that um, women are more aware of that, especially. Uh, again, we, we live with this notion that we have to wake up, go to work, um, take care of the family, and there's no time for travel when really it's mentally, physically, and you know, spiritually 
better for people to travel these days. And I think a lot of people are taking that chance. I've seen quite a few people. You don't have to quit your job, but I've seen quite a few people take that plunge and say, I'm going to write my book, or I'm going to start a blog, or I'm going to take this chance I've been waiting for. So that's been really exciting to watch evolve and been great for my business because I get to mentor and work with these people during the process. When you say you mentor, what to have them start their own business or continue with their business? Both. Um, I had a woman just call me. She's starting her own business. Um, I'm very excited for Donna. She's starting her own slow travel um, business because she thought that it wasn't possible to do. So she learned from the experiences from what I've created, which was one of the biggest compliments I've ever gotten, that it was possible. But also the women who don't need to quit their jobs. Maybe they're happy in the corporate world. They just need a break. So I can work with them before because um, I am going through a life coaching certificate. So I work with them before and then during and then after um, we can continue to talk and, you know, I set them up with um, articles and things to keep a reminder every couple months so that they stay on track. Now, how exactly did you start your business? Well, my business started um, very unexpectedly. I was, in 2006, I had gone to Italy um, after the passing of my father, um, who died at a very young age from cancer. So I realized that life was pretty short. So I said, oh, let me just go to Europe and just see how it works out. Well, I, through a company called Global Experiences, I was able to get an internship abroad, which was for a tour company. And I realized once I stepped off the plane and started working for the company that I, New York was no longer just my only destiny city, that my paths had changed. So after years, I evolved and um, became involved with my own travel company. Now, you speak Italian. Mm -hmm. Did you always speak Italian or did you learn on the fly? I learned on the fly. Um, I am a dual citizen of Italy and, um, and America, which I'm very fortunate to my grandparents. But they spoke Sicilian dialect, um, and it was, it was very difficult to learn as a child. And I learned from actually living in Florence when I took that chance in 2006. I left and then came back in 2008, and I said, I'm just going to make this work. So I worked at a restaurant, and I made myself work there so that I would learn. Um, you have no other choice when you're helping guests, so that was really fun. So that's how I ultimately then drew friends. and. Um, but I've never taken a course except maybe, you know, in school when I was a child, a uh, very, you know, couple years, but basically all on the fly. Did you find it difficult starting your business because you're a woman? You know, I, yes, I think I just found it difficult starting the business in this day and age because there is so many wonderful, wonderful travel companies out there. Um, and to, I think I was a little bit fearful that I would get this um, reaction, like a woman-focused travel business, what that's all about. But um, once I got past my own fear, now that's why I'm able to help other people through it. But it was, it was difficult, especially, like I said, because there are so many wonderful resources out there now. Um, to, you know, to keep up with all the big guys out, you know, the big companies. So what would you say was your biggest challenge in starting your business? Um, I would say that my biggest challenge was the financial aspect of it. Um, I get very excited, you know, as uh, I had left my other job thinking like, this is going to be great, you know, and everything's going to work out. And then you don't realize how much money you put into it. Um, so that, that doesn't just get you down in the business. You can always make money back. It gets you down mentally, right? So you, you get down on yourself. But um, I had mentioned during a, I did a talk last week for the National Organization of Italian Women, and it was helping people realize their dreams. And I told them that I went a little bit of the eat, pray, love style, and I started to pray. And I'm not a religious person, but I was just like, listen, this is my path. How do I get through this? Somebody's got to help me <laughs> because I already put, I'm all in. You know, I put every last dollar I had, and I I'll never I'll never look back. Now I've you know that really works for me. But that getting over that challenge was such a big thing in my growth of my company. So, what is your daily activities like? Since you are a dual citizen, you're traveling between, let's say, New York basically and Italy. It's got to be confusing with the time change. <laughs> yeah, this, you know, my biggest challenge is I have friends in both places um, and great networks in both places. So getting past that part, you know, I 
found myself complaining, oh, I'm missing so-and-so's birthday here, but I'm missing the villa party in Tuscany. But um, really, my daily routine is to try and stay healthy. Um, and that's what I get worried about, because I think running a business, you have to be mentally, again, mentally, physically, and spiritually balanced to make it work. So here in New York, I wake up, I juice, I run, I work out, yoga, Pilates, what you name it, and then I work from my computer the whole time, and except for networking events. And then in Italy, it's research. It's on the fly. It's it's on the road. It's researching towns, visiting my vendors. So it's you know mixing those two together. I, I feel very lucky. What advice would you give to women who are looking for their authentic self? I think that you have to take the time to look within. And you have to make time for yourself. And it seems like such a simple reminder, but you know, even if you can't if you can't get to Italy, which I would love to have you, go to the beach, put your feet in the water, you know, take a, a, a moment to stay still. Now, all right, you're traveling by yourself. Well, you're searching and you're checking out all these different hotels. What tips would you give women who are traveling by themselves that you follow? or what you should follow? <laughs> I try to follow the daily routine of the locals, um, and it varies within cities, right? So in the summer, for example, you know, if you've never been to Italy, Florence is a great place to start because there's 24 hours, there's always something, it's pretty safe in the city center. But when I went to Sicily, I found that things started later in the day. So I was actually alone more in the morning, but people were out more in the summer at, at night. So I try to follow those patterns. Um, I. You know, if I do feel unsafe in a place, and it has happened once or twice, I move. You know, I get through the night, I don't go out, and then the next morning, what? no matter how much it costs, because you can always get money, I move into a place where I feel comfortable. Those are the two biggest lessons I learned this past summer. When you move into a place, well, let's just go back up a second. Mm -hmm. You check into a place. Is there any time that you feel that, oh, not good? Your gut is saying, Time to move on. What do you do then? Well, I, I did, unfortunately, like I said, had this situation this past summer. We're checking out a brand new area of a city center. Um, but I, you know, I was very honest with the uh, owner, the proprietor, and I said, you know, I don't feel comfortable. He didn't take it 100 percent, you know, because he was a male and he was like, what's the big deal? Um, but I did just, I called, you know, I looked up um, some places. I called some places right away and said, what do you have? What's the best deal that you have for tomorrow evening? And I went to the owner and I said, if I have to pay for another night, I will. But if you can work with me here, you know, I really don't feel comfortable. It's not any disrespect, you know. I was very respectful to the location, uh, the actual hotel, but the location, I, I tried to explain that. I didn't feel safe. So it seemed to work. Um, but, you know, in, in worst case, you just, you know, I would. it's very important that you call and you research a place before. Don't just grab your bags and head out and go on the street and pop into hotels. I like to go on TripAdvisor, um, guidebooks, call an expert. That's why I have my clients say they can call me. Um, even if it's an email, and I can look up some suggestions, you know, with, it's very easy now to get your hands on something um, at last minute. Talk about Air A and B or B and B, whatever. What is your feeling about that? I think it's great. I love the apartment living in Italy. I, I work with them. Um, I work with other small apartment companies. I think it's a, a reason. It's a budget friendly. And it's a really great way to get an authentic experience. Um, you have to be, you know, checked prior. I mean, you're not just walking into someone's home. This is something that is um, looked into quite a bit, and they, they do go through a process to make sure it's safe. But I absolutely think that it's a great way to go, especially Airbnb out of all the companies, because it's the most reputable. When you're researching all this information online, it's kind of hard to zero in on what's good and what's bad. Any advice? Right, and you know, that's where my company comes in actually, and that's why I do, again, you can do all this on your own, but if you know somebody, um, if you can't hire an expert such as myself, you can, I would ask friends. There's forums online that you can go to on Facebook, on TripAdvisor, on blogs, where you can actually ask people, have you ever stayed in this location? And that's what I would suggest. Um, doing if you really are um, overwhelmed with with choices and you can't hire an expert, I would say to try to to tap into some of these forums, these women forums, and they're, and they're great. There's a great um, on Facebook. There's a group called Girls Love Travel, 
and it's it's a wide range of ages, and every, you know you can put anything on there, and somebody will always respond. Through Checkpoint Charlie, mm. which is the airport line, the TSA. Do you have any advice to give somebody to skip the line or get ahead? Um, if you can't do the TSA pre-check, which you know it starts at eighty-five dollars a year, it's it's. A lengthy paperwork process, but it's worth it. If you can't do that, I would say um, put some meditation podcasts on your iPhone or your smartphone and put your ears in because, you know, and go early. Go early this year. I mean, I'm leaving Friday and I'm going three or four hours early this time. So if you can't do the pre TSA pre check, find music, um, a good book or something, just stay focused. <laughs> but wait a minute. If I would imagine that you have got the pre-check for you, and you're going three or four hours before you board your flight? Just this year. I've never done this before. I read this morning that there's that they were saying some of the big airports. They didn't. They said JFK and LaGuardia weren't on the top, but you never want to be too, <laughs> too sure. So, yeah, just this year, just this past month, it's been a little bit crazy, but um, usually it's two hours before. Um, and then the TSC pre-check, you can be in within an hour. But I would say this year, you know, be careful. <laughs> Everybody who travels with their uh, smartphone, and you're always looking for Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. And then there's the hotel computer sometimes they have. And one place that I was at, I used their computer, and I logged on into Google. And lo and behold, I had somebody else's whole email. Mm. So what I did which probably freaked them out when they got the email, I said, thank you for sharing your base, because I sent it to a fictitious number that would obviously come back to them. So, you know, what do you do to safeguard your own emails and your communications, both on your phone and on your laptop? Well, one thing I've learned is I don't really like to use the personal hotspot when I'm traveling. We all have that on our phones, and I think people forget to shut that off. Um, it's a way, you know, most of the time people don't pick up on that sort of Wi-Fi, but it's an actual Wi-Fi network that if people can tap in, they can get some of your data. Um, yeah, it, I mean, it's, it's pretty secure, but it has happened once where I've gotten a message <laughs> from somebody, and they said, hi, and I said, oh my gosh, <laughs> who is this? Um, so I would avoid, you know, make sure on the settings of your phone that the personal hotspot's off, and it costs money, right? It costs a lot of money when you're traveling. Um, I would also, again, I am not a huge fan, even though it is convenient, I'm not a huge fan of using the computer at, um, at, at a hotel. You know, if you have a smartphone, I think if you could just wait to get the Wi-Fi till you get back to your hotel, or like in Italy, for example, most of my clients, they can get a phone for, you know, if you have an old unlocked AT&T phone, you can get a, a, a SIM chip in a local Italian store, a, like phone store, and then you can put 20, 30 euro on it, or and get like a one month contract, two week contract, whatever it is, and then you can use that network and you can communicate with your family. Those are some of the things that I, I try to do. Um, and I don't use too many devices, too. I don't bring an iPad, a smartphone, a computer. It's one or two. That's what I travel with. Yeah, because it's like <laughs> one more thing you got to keep track of. I know. I mean, you've got your passport. You've got your money. Mm -hmm. You can't, um, and the list just goes on. Yeah, it's true. So how do you protect your passport? Do you carry it everywhere with you since you're I was going to say you're like a nomad traveling all over. <laughs> um, I don't actually, unless I'm going like to a very far, you know, going significantly far from where I am. For example, if I'm going from Florence to Puglia, obviously I'm bringing my passport. But if I'm driving the day in Tuscany, I only have a copy on my phone. I also send a copy to my family, and also when you register through the consulate, you you give a copy. So I, there's ultimately three or four copies out there in the world. Um, so I, I do that with both passports. You, oh, that's right. You're a dual citizen. Yeah, so I have to do it with both. Oh, that's interesting. So when you're in New York, do you let the Italian consul know that you're here? Or how does that work? Or they don't care? I don't think they care so much. <laughs> <laughs> they, have a lot, they have stuff to do. You know, they you know, had to drink their espresso. And no, they have, it, it was so, it's such a long process for me to get my passport um, that I know I feel very secure with it you know, with the paperwork and the backup that they have in the office there. So if something happened, but basically I just let 
you know, the U.S. consulate know what's going on as far as when um, when we're traveling. There's something about when you get, um, check into a hotel, getting an extra key. Is this for safety reasons? I read it somewhere, and I was a little confused. Yeah, of course. Um, you know, I go back and forth with that as well, because safety reasons, meaning, yes, it's great, I lost my key, now I can get in. Um, but the unsafe reason is, oh no, where is that key? Or I have to pay a charge. Um, but I, you know, I, I really just carry both together. It may not be the best advice, but I like to have everything in my hand um, where I can see it. Um, and just make sure when, with the key, which they don't really do anymore, but they, they don't put the, the room number on there. I still have that happen sometimes overseas, so I have to tell my clients, you know, just be careful. You don't carry the, the, the cardboard packet that says the key, the room number on there if you're going to do that. Again, simple reminder, but it does happen, believe it or not, because you're so frantic from preparing for everything else. My cousin gave me this wallet that is like a metal case and I keep my credit cards in there. Mm -hmm. Is there any other devices that you could use to protect your credit card? Because, you know, people can come by with this machine and just scan your credit cards and your even your passport. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I actually, and I have to tell you, I cannot remember the name, that's how new it is. I just saw something on social media about a week ago that it's a slash free bag. Um, I haven't tested it myself. Um, but they have the slash free bags now. And then there's also, um, I learned through the Women's Travel Fest. So every year there's a, a travel fest in the springtime. Um, and it, it's all sorts of great things about travel. And then they also go through some safety tips as well. And there was a company there that actually makes pants and jackets that have hidden pockets and they're slash free as well. So I'm sure if you go on the Women's Travel Fest, New York Women's Travel Fest um, uh, website, NewYorkWomensTravelFest.com, you'll be able to find information on those companies because they do have some information on tips as well. Is there a rule of, um, <clears throat> excuse me, that you follow when you're exchanging money? Yeah, I try to do it before through my bank um, because, you know, nowadays there's um, the Charles Schwab Bank has a no fee, no fee, any, any ATM in the whole entire world. Um, ATM, debit card. So now I know I can go to an ATM. I'm obviously cautious, just like here in New York or anywhere, about when, you know, with my PIN and information, but that's a great company um, to have. But so I exchange the rest of the money prior to my, to, in the bank, if you can. That's the, the best way to just be safe, you know, or at the airport, it's more expensive, but it's better than a vendor off the street. Yeah, I remember I was in some country and the vendor on the street was exchanging my money and she figured, ah, she's got an American, mm. you know. She tried to screw me, so I'm standing there counting. I said, you made a mistake, and she just looked at me and it was like, I caught you, lady. Yeah. You know, it was like, it was substantial. I mean, most people don't count and don't walk away, but, you know, it's my money. So yeah, if it's I a do... euro, it's, it's, it's still your money. <laughs> exactly. What other tips traveling, you know, as far as buying things or carrying things, well, let me ask it a different way. What is the one thing that you take with you that you can't live without? And I said it once, say it again, my iPhone. I, I know it, it's, ever, you know, like I said, if I, if I don't have my American phone, I try to tap into a network to have there because for emergencies, um, you know, music, you could have video, camera, um, everything's all in one. Um, but if you, can, if you can't, um, I, I would say, Oh man, a good book. Something again. If you're on the line and your phone dies, then at least you can, you know, keep yourself occupied and and you know in a good state while you're traveling. Do you find that you bring? I know uh, drug supplies when you travel, because mm -hmm. I know one time my bag was full of drug supplies, toiletries and stuff, so that I wouldn't have to go looking for things. Mm -hmm because in some countries they're not open seven days a week like in New York. So is there anything else that you, besides your iPhone, that you carry with you? Yeah, I, I do, again, probably the ginger pills. There are a few holistic. Now, again, in Italy, things are really evolving, so you can find a lot there. It's changed so much in the past 10 years. I used to have to bring all my toiletry, all my medicine, but, you know, any prescription medicine, but there are holistic shops. 
um, in worst case, but yes, anything that um, you use daily. Um, I also tell my clients who, again, are gluten-free or vegan um, to bring, um, there's a website, uh, I've been following Jody for many years, Legal Nomads, and she's fantastic, she's a foodie expert. And what she has on her site is you can actually print out in Italian, like, I'm gluten-free, or gluten-free options she has. You know, these are things I help my clients with, but if you are not hiring an expert and you don't have a guidebook on you, check out some blogs before you leave, print out these little sheets, throw it in your bag, and then you don't even have to speak the language. You could just literally hand it to them. And uh, it keeps, it makes the meal and more enjoyable, then you don't need the medicine. So it's a... <laughs> One of the things that I do when I'm traveling is I go into the grocery store or the pharmacy. That's how I become more familiar with the people that are living there. Are there any other, besides the restaurants, any other tips that you would give to somebody? Go ahead. So I, I like the idea of going for a walk or run in the morning. I think uh, besides the restaurants, it's very important to have a coffee standing up at the bar. I know that's considered a restaurant, but when you go into a cafe in Italy, you know, we're used to here um, sitting down or, or running out of the cafe with our to-go cups. The most I've learned um, about people, um, especially on Sundays, I always meet the priests in um, by the, the the big churches like the Duomo in Florence, and we have a coffee together. And I learned so much about the town um, and insider information, great places to buy shoes and bags. You just never know what'll happen on a Sunday in a cafe, just by standing up, just by standing up and not sitting at a table. In the closing moments of the show, what would you like to leave the audience with? I just want to, I just want people to, to travel, not be fearful of not only things they hear on the media, what goes on in the world, but also of themselves, of not having enough money or not having enough time. These are two things that stop us from enjoying life and the simple, you know, everyday occurrences that um, happen just by stepping on a plane and taking a chance. So I just say, if, again, if this is, if you're watching this, this is probably a sign that you should be traveling, especially to Italy. Thank you so much, Cassandra. Oh, thank you. It's such a pleasure. Thank you for joining us. I hope you've learned something about traveling in Italy. Look forward to hearing from you. Please write us here at The Woman's Connection. Bye now.